Ja, da ruller vi av gårde på dag to av Main Event i Norges Mesterskap i Bok 2023. Vi er i Bratislava, Slovakia, fortsatt. Stig Moen, Sverre Grogg, Sundbø. Hva skjer i dag? Herfra ut så for vår del så er det Main Event som det er full fokus på. Vi kommer sikkert til å oppdatere reserve, kommer til å oppdatere fra de andre turneringene som går parallelt. Men nå er det dag to av Main Event, og nå er det egentlig alvor. I går var det en transportetappe, i dag kan man ikke sitte og vente lenger. Og det er virkelig sant det Stig sier. Jeg vil påstå at Main Event begynner akkurat nå. Det til tross for at jeg har vært ute i allerede en 6-7 level, så burde det egentlig ikke være mulig med den strukturen som man hadde i går. Det var en fantastisk dag for de som har lyst til å spille poker med mange big blinds, forsøke å bygge opp på den måten. Men vi vet jo at det finnes de som rett og slett kommer møtene opp til dag to, har lyst til å utfjerne det big stack-spillet, fordi det ikke er noe de trives med. Komme inn i dag med 40 big blinds, selv om de kommer inn med startstack i dag. Altså, det har vært en nydelig startdagsstruktur, og nå begynner de å lide litt for hvor god den var i starten, ved at det blir hardere og hardere spill. Ja, for det er jo en del som starter denne dagen med mindre enn hva de startet med i går. Å ja, mye. Vi hadde jo på TV-bordet sist i går også spesielt. Bilstad, Oskar Bilstad, som jo spilte semifinal i Heads Up, han gikk jo på noen skikkelige spenner, satt veldig short, fikk en dobling rykk nok, men jeg tror ikke han har mer enn kanskje 8-9 big blinds videre til dag 2. Og vi har jo en verdensmester i sjakk som også er videre til dag 2, så vidt etter hvert. Ja, han fikk litt røft dag på slutten i går. Jeg synes han spilte veldig bra i store deler av dagen, men så gjør han en liten feil når han har en S-dame og skal ut og beskytte i en pott. Han skal squeeze inn med 50 000 etter at det ligger 2-12 000 bud i bordet, hvor han egentlig kunne sluppet ganske billig unna og fått samme svar. Hvis han hadde bud rundt 30, så tror jeg han hadde fått ganske ærlige svar og fått tilsvarende mye respekt for det budet sitt. Det er en måte man kan spare inn 20 ganske effektivt der, uten å risikere noe. Og sånne avgjørelser blir jo fryktelig viktig når man sitter såpass dypt som man gjør i går også. Da må man ta sizingen på alvor. Men da er det jo ikke så veldig mye mer å si, gutter, enn kom dere på jobb. Du skal kommentere, og du skal ut og lage morsomme og herlige og ta litt pulsen på ting, Sverre. Jeg gleder meg. Det jeg gleder meg til i dag er å se... De spillerne som er gode akkurat i denne fasen, fordi det er noen som virkelig hever spillet sitt med en gang de føler at de får litt mer gjennomslag for det trykket, det turneringstrykket som de kan sette. Og så er det noen som faller gjennom, og det er akkurat nå, det er nå man virkelig begynner å se konturen av hvem blir Norgesmester 2023. Ja, folkens, som dere ser i bakgrunnen her, så er det dealere som får utlevert det de skal ha for å komme seg på jobb. Og disse to gutta her, de skal også komme på seg på jobb. Din jobb i dag, det er å trykke liker og abonner på YouTube-kanalen vår, sånn at den fortsetter å vokse og vi bringer poker ut til folket. Ha en glad annen dag i Main Event! Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back to the Norwegian Championship. We are on to day two of the main event. The main event attracted 904 players, and we can use the word players rather than entries because this was a pure freeze-out affair. During the two opening fights, with a handful more coming in before the start of day two with a 40 big blind stack, we will be playing eight blind levels of one hour each today, similar to the opening days with blinds starting at 1,000, 2500 with a big blind ante of 2500. We have an exciting feature table for you today. Uh, tons of chips on this table. We could see not all players got here on time, uh, so we will be starting, it looks like a little bit short-handed to start off the action. I see the lovely dealer, Tonya, who's been a long time friend at the table. But we're hopping right into the action and we have Matthias in here. Uh, Three betting to 15,000 from the hijack, and uh, Winka uh, calling from under the gun with Queen King, and you can see Matthias in uh, here flopping top pair. Winka with the open ender for not the open ender, but the gut shot to Broadway, and uh, Matthias in here takes it down with a bet on the turn to win an early pot. I am your host, Jason Glatzer. I'll be with you all week long. Looking forward to some exciting action. 
the 904 players generated a prize pool of 634,608 euros. The exact payouts will be announced uh, very shortly, and as soon as we have them, we will share them with you on the stream as well. You could see it's a busy top floor, but this isn't the only floor where the poker action is taking place. Also, there are dozens upon dozens of tables on the main floor. We are on the top floor where the TV table is. There are a couple dozen side tables as well. So far, nothing doing. The graphics will catch up with us momentarily. It looks like we have an open here by Alan Granham. And a call by Petra Christensen. It looks like it was an open to 5,500 based on the chips I see at the table, but that will be confirmed. <laughs> Nine, ten, five, flop with two hearts. Looks like Allen will be continuing for another fifty five hundred. And takes down the pot after Petter folds. And now we can see the cards here. It was jacks against fours. The jacks had an overpair. Fours <laughs> were dominated and got no help from the rest of the board. The technicians just turned up the volume on the table for us, even though I don't understand very much Norwegian. Perhaps some of you at home do. I have learned a lot of words this week, but I can't pretend that I can follow a full conversation. And Espen Kolstad limping with his tens from under the gun. And Rick Tolleson deciding what to do with his ace-10. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we could see that he'd really be just drawing with the ace here. If a 10 comes and it's a 10 high flop, it could get dangerous. He is raising in position. That clears out at least Westby. But not Linka. We could see all the 10s are out. Linka calls from the big line. So Kolstad will not be flopping a set that much, we know. But we could see the equities here. With Tolfsen and Linka blocking each other with that ace 10. But perhaps, depending on the flop, they could steal it away. This is a beautiful flop, though, for 10s. It checks over to Kolstad, who limped from under the gun before calling a raise from Tolfsen, and he bets 10,000. Tolfsen does have. A backdoor straight, a uh, backdoor flush draw, two overcards, and opts to at least see a turn, assuming Glinka doesn't raise this up. And Glinka wisely gets out of the way with no red cards in her hand and no connection with her ace or ten. And this may slow down or speed up the action depending on which way you're looking at it. There is a third diamond on the board, but there's also potential straight possibilities. Not necessarily cards at the under the gun or the button would be limping or raising with. And Kolstad keeping the aggression, thinking his overpair is good. And as of right now, it is betting 15,000. Let's see what Tolfsen does with his two over cards and the nut flush draw. And he's raising it, it seems. No, that's a call, sorry. 
And the Knight of Diamonds on the river, Thompson gets there with a the flush. Kolstad with a 10 high flush, Thompson with an ace high flush. Espen looks to be in a little bit of pain. It was a very nice spot, but then having those two diamonds come on the turn of the river, despite having that ten of diamonds, can be frustrating. But it's not slowing him down, it seems. But that will cost him some chips. Tolfson will be raising. Without a doubt, he has the nuts. Really, he's only losing to an eight of diamonds, so maybe he won't be raising if he's that concerned that Kolstad could have that eight of diamonds for the straight flush. That would be a bit of a cooler. So I do expect to see a raise here by Tolfson. And based on his stack, it could even be a jam, putting Kolstad into a tough spot. Big hand early on at the feature table. You could see there's 564 players remaining. Today is day two. We'll have three more days after this until a winner is crowned on Sunday. And does indeed jam. Now let's see what Kolstad does. Kolstad out of position. Perhaps just wanted to set his price. Perhaps now thinking if Thompson has any bluffs in his hand. Obviously, we see in this case he has the second nuts, the ace high flush. And makes the call. So Thompson doubles up, gets there on the river. Kolstad seems very frustrated about that turn of events, but still will have 71,000. Meanwhile, Thompson has doubled up to 204,000 very early on the feature table. An exciting start to day two here at the Norwegian Championship main event. <laughs> Yesterday we had the honor at the feature table of watching chess legend Magnus Carlsen play. He was up and down, but near the end of the night he ended on a down note, but he was full of action at the end of the night. You can go on the Poker NM YouTube channel and check that out. The video will be there for you to watch <laughs> forever. If you want to see the mayhem, you can fast forward to the last 30 minutes. But the whole feature table was very exciting. And if you have the time, we recommend you watch it from beginning to end. Sykes fine, wants to open his 10-9 uh, from under the gun. And indeed he does, a 6,000, a bit of a loose open. That's though Christensen to fold his ace-nine suited. So players are giving him credit. Now we have Tony Westby at the table. He wasn't there at the start of the day. A friend of mine from events in Estonia and elsewhere. I believe I met him many years ago actually in Prague. Also with a Norwegian group. But although it was a loose open, nobody wanted to play back. Picked up the blinds and the ante. And now is in the big blind himself. Good timing on the raise there by Svein Mat Mathiasen. Alan Granham is not going to do the same thing with the Jack-9 as Svein did with his 10-9 in the previous hand. But perhaps we'll see it open by Peter Christensen. 
And indeed we do with the King Jack offsuit. He raises it up to 5,500 from early position. And so far it's getting through, but we may see it defend by spine with the A5 suited. And indeed we do. And spine flopping bottom pair, Christensen with two overcards. It was checked over to Christensen. Let's see if he continues. Doesn't have any diamonds in his hand, but can be repping a lot of hands here. Bet's 4,000. That isn't going to scare spine away. Spine check calls. Six of spades on the turn may slow down Christensen. He may have been slowed down anyway. Indeed, he does check it back. And the two of diamonds on the river would have completed a flush draw. So lots of scare cards now from Christensen. But let's see if he's going to be the one that tries to rep the flush. Does check it back. And it's fine. Mathewson wins back to back pots. Always good to start the feature table and a second day of a massive event with a little bit of momentum is a confidence booster. Although poker is a game where you need to play your cards as good as possible, it is also a mental game. And it's hard to remain mentally strong for five days. Folds around to Espen Kolstad, who whips the button. Looks like Espen Kolstad has a limping strategy. We saw him limp earlier as well. <coughs> Alan Granham called from the big blind, but neither player connecting with the king of clubs. Seven of hearts, seven of spades flop. The seven of cups turn does give Granham a flush draw, but it is a scary flush draw, even if the flush completes, and it does not. It looks like it's going to check down, and Kolstad will win this hand with ace high. So although Kolstad did lose a bit of chips after losing a hand with tens against ace tens, it began with him limping. This time the limp strategy allowed him to play small ball and get some chips back in a small pot. Personally, not a player myself that understands a limping strategy, but it does work quite well for some of the super high stakes players and well known players, including Dominic Nietzsche, who we've seen do it time and time again profitably. <coughs> but it isn't necessarily something I recommend unless you understand why you're doing it. And since I don't understand why Dominic is doing it, it is not something I incorporate in my game, but. Perhaps it's a little bit different for Alan Granham. And Tolfson with a little bit of a wide range from early, wide, wide raise here with uh, King 8 suited from early position. Gets called by Mathewson with Ace Jack from the button, and Christensen defends with his Queen Jack. A rainbow 10 10 5 flop expect the preflop aggressor to try to continue here despite not connecting it. But not this time. Instead it's going to be Spine Mathewson trying to take this down from the button. He does have the best hand at the moment. And wins another pot. He's up to 280,000 already. 
players did start with 100,000 and chips. There were no re-entries allowed. There were two opening fights, <laughs> and players still could get in with a late entry, with up to which would be 40 big blinds to start the day before the start of day two. So we did get a few new entries. Did see a few players when I was walking around with four 25k chips asking for change. It makes sense not to give them the smaller chips as throughout the day you will see some of those smaller chips being colored up into larger denominations. So far every hand by Westby has been a mystery hand so I'm not sure if he's putting his cards in the box or not. Sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating to be on the feature table to remember to do that, but <laughs> I'm sure that the dealer will be reminding him if he has his cards long enough to see a flop. But Christensen picking up the blinds after, uh, after with just his ace-deuce from the small blind and is now on the button. <laughs> One player that seems to be missing, at least at the moment, is Chris Jonasson. I guess he can afford to miss a few hands. He bagged 273,500 to start the day. Tony Westby was one of the new players to join in. That's why he was not on my original list and why I was surprised to see him at the table. But now we can see Westby's cards, and he opens from under the gun with King-10 suited. Looking to pick up some chips. Tony is a very strong Norwegian player. Always very focused. And Westby, not the worst spot for him at all. Jack of hearts, queen of hearts. Jack of hearts, king of hearts, queen of spades. And is going to continue with his top pair and his open-ended straight draw for 5,000. Meanwhile, Tolfsen could flop a flush draw with his 10-5 suited. Also has that same open-ender. You can see, actually, the equities are close despite Westby flopping that top pair thanks to Tolfsen having that flush draw. And I don't expect to see Tolfsen going anywhere. He's probably thinking about whether to call or raise or how much to raise if he indeed is going to raise. And he will be raising, folks. Putting pressure on the short stack Westby. Not that he's super short, but he is the short stack at this table. Buying in for 100,000 in chips to start the day. And Westby calls a raise to 19,000. Already the pot at 53,500 and counting. And the 10 of spades on the turn may actually slow down the action despite Westby improving to two pair. Any ace, Westby would be drawing super thin. Let's see if Tolfsen continues his aggression with now really just a flush draw. He does have bottom pair, but he can't think that's good. Does check. There are two flush draws on the board now, neither of which Westby has. It is a bit of a difficult spot, but he is in position from under the gun. Opts to check it back and reevaluate on the river. Perhaps he can improve to a full house to make life easier for him. We do not see the river yet, but it was a check call <laughs> by Tolfsen. Hopefully the graphics will catch up or that we can zoom in on this board. And here we go. It's a straight on the board, actually, after the Ace of Diamonds com completes the board on the river. So it really didn't matter what kind of betting action there was. Uh, the board had the nuts. Regardless, players could have had deuce three offsuit and still chop the pot. 
not the best case scenario for Westby, but it could have been worse if that was the ace of hearts. That would have given his opponent a flush. And being that Westby did start the day with a starting stack, he can't really afford to lose too many chips. And it looks like Chris has joined the table in seat four. Did lose a few chips, but not too many by missing the first few hands. like spine open for 7,000. We'll do our best to commentate until the graphics catch up and try to follow the action as it's happening at the table. And Chris Jonasson, who just joined the table, will be calling a little bit wide from the button with 8-7 offsuit. And we can see now what spine was opening with, and it was pocket rockets. Likely happy to get a call, even if he's playing it out of position. He should be thrilled. and expect him to continue on this king four jack flop with two spades. He does also have that ace of spades. Not that this matters too much at this point. Does bet small, does get the job done, and is now near 300,000 in chips. Spine did start the day with 228,000 in chips, so it's been quite the good start for him. So far, pretty much every pot he has entered, he has won. That has to be a good feeling. It can be frustrating when you start the day and you start bleeding chips and then you have to keep mentally strong. Momentum doesn't have to be a real thing, but very often it is. But what you shouldn't do in poker when you're losing chips, you just have to reevaluate your situation based on your current chip count. You can't be worrying about previous hands because you can't get those hands back to change it and you can reflect on them later on, but there's no point in reflecting on them right now. So Kolstad with a limp again from under the gun. He did this with 10s earlier. He limped another hand. This time he's doing it with jack eight suited. Alan Granham coming in with the fours with a limp behind, but Jonathan, who just joined the table, it's his turn to wake up with aces on the second hand that he gets to play, raising it up to 11,000. Gets Linka to fold her fives in the big blind. Kolstad also getting out of the way. And Granham may be set mining here. Not this time. So small value for Jonathan with the aces. At least no bad B for him. He would have liked to have at least got into the flop to get a little bit more money out of his opponents. But despite missing the first few hands, he has made up for that in short time. <laughs> it's been an absolute blast here at Card Casino, Bratislava. It's the first time the Norwegian Championship has visited Bratislava after spending about a decade in Dublin at around the same time as the Irish Open. But as you could see, based on the 914 players that have come out today, that the crowds still came in big numbers. And we said it was 904 before, so there must have been 10 more players to get in to day two before the start of the day. <laughs> Westby picking up the blinds and ante with his sixes. That isn't the worst case for him. Playing sixes post pop can be hard. When you are the pre pop aggressor, then you're not just repping that you have sixes, but it isn't a hand that typically flops very well. As we saw yesterday, you know, you're very often, even when you get the six, it could be scary with like a four, five, six, six, seven, eight, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're playing against players in the blinds, they very often have those straight draws or made straights on those kind of boards. But it's still worthy of opening, but you can't be disappointed when everybody folds and you just pick up the blinds.
<laughs> and players are having fun. Atmosphere is loose. The Norwegian community is absolutely fantastic in that regard. Very supportive of each other. Very competitive when they're playing at the tables, but at the same time like to have fun. And Kolstad with another win, but this time it's just a completion from the small blind with ace three. It's fine, Mathewson jacking it up to 10,000 from the big blind in position with 10-7 off. And the pot's up to 22,500 after Espen calls. Kolstad bricks this king 5-5 five five flop with two diamonds. And Spine continuing his story and steals one away from Kolstad. And over 300,000 in chips. It's been a bit of fun action here. And you can see why aggressive poker is very often good poker. Espen passively getting into the pot with his ace three. It's fine being aggressive preflop, repping a stronger range than what he had, and then being able to take that down on the flop with just one bet. Chris Jonasson raising it up with his sevens from early position. Henrik Thompson thinking of playing his king queen from one seat over. But not this time. Westby tossing away his a6. And let's see if this gets through. Branham may decide to defend with his queen five. But not this time, and Jonasson picking up another pot. So the, despite the late start, Jonasson does have 278,000, which is more than he started the day with. Did miss the first few hands. And here's a look at the chip counts. So Kolstad hasn't had the best start after doubling up a player with his tens against ace ten. Did have the ten of diamonds with four diamonds on the board by the river came around but was up against the nuts. Or really the second nuts but with an ace high flush. But being that blinds are only up to 2,500 big blinds, he still has a bit of playability. And now it's Jonathan's turn with the tens. He just had sevens. He's already had aces, so he's getting hit with a lot of pocket pairs. And raising it to 8,000. So quite a big sizing as well. Let's see what Westby opts to do with a little less than a starting stack with his ace-queen. It looks like he might be reaching for a three bet. Does indeed three bet to 23,000. And I don't expect Jonasson to go anywhere with his tens. It's a question of whether he will four bet or call. But he does indeed fold. He was going to be out of position in this pot, giving Tony Westby some respect there. Tens is a very strong hand to be playing. Perhaps felt he was just going to be mining to a set. He wouldn't be getting proper odds to do just that. Perhaps also not wanting to play that hand post flop out of position against somebody that just three bet him. Sometimes it's better to lose a little than put yourself in a position to win a lot. And then 
another big ace for Westby. This one's a little bigger with the offsuit big slick. Jacking it up to 6,000. Fine, Mathiasen, three betting to 15,000 from the cutoff with King-9 suited. This may be a missed time bet. Knowing how Westby plays, I would expect to see a four bet or a jam when it folds back around to him. I've seen Tony Westby play quite a lot over the years. He's checking his cards. I don't think I'm gonna stand corrected here. It is possible he will just call. The one thing he won't be doing is folding, like we saw Chris Jonathan just do after opening with 10s and facing a 3-bet by Westby. And does indeed jam a stack of 109,750. Gets the job done. Probably happy that he doesn't have to sweat a flip or whatnot. Maybe less happy if he knew that his opponent had King-9 and not something like Queens or Jacks. But still, more than happy to take down a pop pre-pop when you started the day with an opening stack of 100,000 with his big slick. the action. I just got an interesting update for our on-site interviewer, Svede, who will be talking to players all week long. He's been doing it already. It was fantastic during the heads-up coverage when he was able to actually commentate some of the stuff happening on the side table when we were down to the semifinals. But we have a three-way pot with 23,000 in the middle. It looks like Winka was the one to start things off with the ace nine suited and does flop top pair on the ace of spades, five of clubs, four of clubs flop. The problem that she has is that Spine Mathiasen also has top pair but with a better kicker. Does just call, he is in position, not putting more pressure on Linka, letting Linka do the betting. Perhaps not sure if his ace-queen is good, considering Linka was an early position opener. The five of diamonds, pairs of board on the turn. Linka not slowing down at all. That's 15,500. The five of diamonds shouldn't be a scare card for a spine. does indeed call with the best hand and there's already 76,000 in the pot and the queen of diamonds on the river improving spine even further to top two pair this could spell trouble for Linka who bets 20,000 now there are hands that are beating Spine, obviously, but top two pair is very strong. None of those flushes completed. We know he's not folding, obviously, but is he going to call? Is he going to raise? Are the questions that we have? Does raise it and raises it big to 78,000. Can Klinka snip this out? that she was never good, or that the Queen of Diamonds did something special for his spine. He didn't meet that Queen of Diamonds, it just gave him more confidence with his top two pair, but he was ahead the entire way. Huh? <laughs> 
Fastlane, vet du. Ja, det er riktig. Det er litt målet, vet du. Kanskje vi har snu om på sånne butikker. I like that she's not making a quick decision in live poker. You don't need to. This is a big pot. When you look at this and you see what you have, the first instinct is just to call, but he perhaps knows how Spine plays. If he has any bluffs that he would be doing, then he would check the flop, check the turn, and then... wasn't checking but call a bet on the flop call a bet on the turn and then raise a bet on the river what story is he telling here would he be doing that with any bluffs in this case we see that he's not bluffing but perhaps he has some bluffs in his range perhaps he would be doing that with uh, a club draw and Glinka does make the call to give Spine a massive pot of 232,000 while Glinka did lose a bit of her stack, but still has 131,000 to play with. But it's fine, Mathiasen now, the first player over 400,000 at the feature table, which is a massive stack considering the big blinds only at 2,500. does with her pocket threes after losing that last hand. This is a hand that's easier to play from the blinds where you can be just calling a bet or even from late position. But now adopting a limping st strategy similar to what we've seen from Espen Kolstad and a number of hands and Kolstad limping behind with the ace ten suited. And Henrik Tolfsen getting involved with his ace five suited as well with the one behind. <laughs> and Westby going to get to see a free flop with the six four off. May have not defended that, but doesn't need to worry about that right now. <laughs> and so far it's Tolfsen ahead after pairing his five, but that's bottom pair. And Kolstad now with the open-ended straight draw. And he's the one to fire out. Let's see if this gets through or not. And indeed it does. Picks up some much needed chips after bleeding away some of his stack earlier today. Did start today with a healthy stack of 167,500. Still isn't back there yet. <laughs> has plenty of time to try to build his stack. The structure in the main event is super deep, super good. One hour blind levels. <laughs> Day two will feature eight of those blind levels with short 15 to 20 minute breaks after every two blind levels. Thompson on the button with the queen do suited and he will be opening it up for 6,000 that will get Westby to fold his dominating queen nine but Linka with a pretty hand to defend with with this 8-7 suited camp limit are all for calling and Linka here flopping a flush draw while Thompson flops bottom pair Check 
Tech calls a bet of 5,000 with her flush draw along with some backdoors. And now Linka improves to a better pair. Goes check, check. And the Jack of Diamonds on the river. Check, check again. And Linka will win the hand with her paired eight. Get some chips back that she coughed up earlier to uh, spine Mathewson. You can see Glinka is sporting that cool bet patch. There were a lot of sponsors for the Poker North Masters and Norwegian Championship sending over hundreds of players via qualifiers and other means. Not just full bet, but also Unibet, That's Guts, and BetSafe as well. Jonathan from the hijack and he opens to 8,000. He had this big betting size earlier with the 10, so they had to let them go to a 3-bet by Westby. Westby not afraid to call in position with King-9 suited. And I go heads up, leading into the flop. With Westby's King-9 dominated, but that could all change. Neither player hitting a piece of this queen queen six flop. Jonas is ready to continue. Fires out for 9,000. Westby quickly gets up on his, on his hand. Not looking to float to see a Turner River. Not looking to raise to try to steal it away. Jonathan open once again, but not this time. Ace nine not strong enough for him from middle position, and probably good that he didn't, considering Westby waking up with the Cowboys. We saw him with the six thousand bet size earlier, but this time it is seven thousand. He's hoping for someone to show up with a hand, and Spine will be defending with his ace ten offsuit from the big blind. And what a flop for Westby, flopping top set. Meanwhile, Spine Matthiasen with the gut shot to Broadway does check, expect Westby to continue and not play this slow. It is a small bet of 5,500 that may lure Spine to call, and indeed it does. And now the unbeatable full house for Westby. Let's see if he tries to disguise how strong he is this time around, or if he continues with the aggression. He is looking down at his chips. It doesn't look like he'll be betting that big. It looks like a bet of 9,000, and it is. And Spine asking to see Westby's stack. We can see that he has about a starting stack at the moment. And 
does wisely get rid of his hand at that point in time. So Westby able to pick up a little bit of value on the flop, but his opponent opted not to give more chips to his opponent. Okay, we did correct the field sides earlier to 914, but it is back to the 904 that we thought it was to start the day. So it must have just been a graphical thing. So the figures that we gave to start of the day were correct. 904 entries to generate a prize pool of 634,608 euros. This is a freeze out affair, so it was 904 players and not 904 entries. And it is a Norwegian only affair, so there are nearly a couple thousand Norwegians. And as you can see, a lot of them hopped into this main event looking for the prestige of getting their photo on the wall. If you go down to the main floor, you can see photos of all the past main event winners. Very pretty to look at. It goes back so far that some of those names are not even in poker anymore. But Westby opening the hijack with the four is getting a call from Linka with the 10-9 suited and from Henrik Mathiasen with the ace-10 from the small blind. see equities are super close between the three players. And not the flop Westby was wanting to see. Minka actually pulls ahead because she paired our nine, but she has an open ender and, Math and Svein Mathieson also has an open ender. It checks around to Linka who bets 8,000. I don't expect Svein going anywhere. He does call. Westby quickly gets out of the way. And the three of clubs on the turn, this is a, actually a good card for Linka because not only does she have paired up the nine but open ender, but she also has a flush draw. However, none of those draws completed. Linka has some good showdown value, but let's see if Spine will try to make a stab at this despite missing. He's not just making a stab, it looks like he's betting rather big. He bets more than the pot with 56,000 and steals one away from Linka. Good table awareness there by Spine Mathieson. He does need to be careful with those towers. I'm a tower guy myself when I'm playing. However, when I am live reporting, I do like to see those stacks in 20s. It doesn't really matter at the feature table because every hand is tracked and the stacks are always kept up to date. We are on a 30 minute delay, however, so keep that in mind. That is so that we can see the whole cards and broadcast them to you as well without giving away information or learning that information ourselves. Madison's been getting uh, some cards, and this time it's Big Slick from Under the Gun, raising up to 8,000. Alan Granham calling from the small blind with Ace-5 suited. This is a hand that maybe he would 3-bet with if it wasn't against an Under the Gun open, or perhaps he'd be playing this the same way. Both players flopping top pair. Jonathan with the better kicker on the 10 of diamonds. Ace of hearts, six of clubs flop. Random checks. And it looks like Chris is reaching for some chips here. Indeed he is. He bets 9,000. Alan Granham quickly calls. And not the worst card in the deck for Granham. It doesn't improve him to two pair, but now he has a flush draw. So if he thought he had kicker problems before, if it's a reasonably sized bet, even though he thinks he's behind, he will likely call to see a river. But it doesn't look like it's going to be that reasonable after all. It is a bet of 27,000. So now decision time for Alan Granham. If it was a smaller bet, it wouldn't be that much of a decision, but does indeed call. And 
doesn't get there on the ton of spades river let's see if random can get away from this let's see maybe he'll get to uh, not have that decision to make it all depends on what Chris Jonathan decides to do here after it's checked over to him but he will have a decision Chris reaching for chips copy with aces over tens for two pair with that king kicker and betting 47,000 easy decision for us because we can see the cards that random should fold but that's being very results oriented and it's very hard in real time when you connect with that ace but being that Jonathan was the under the gun opener he did continue on all three streets with bets he may think that he is ahead at this point, he has more or less a left catcher because that 10 paired up too. So even if Jonathan was just doing this with middle pair, he would have improved the trips instead of the top two. It's good that at least Granum is thinking through the hand again, perhaps trying to get a read from his opponent as well. Looks like Chris Jonathan does have a good poker face. It's going to be hard to get a read. He's not talking back, staring into space. It is also possible if Random thinks he's behind that he tries to turn his hand into a bluff, but we know Jonathan's likely not to go anywhere. That would probably spell disaster if he did that. But maybe that's one of the things he's thinking about. Does make the side call. Didn't seem too thrilled about it. And will be getting the bad news that he had kicker problems. Meanwhile, Chris Jonathan is near 400,000 in chips after winning a big pot with his big slick. <laughs> getting value on all three streets, including a fairly decent sized ripper bet. Westby with the ace queen. This is openable from any position. Westby quickly agrees after looking at his cards, opening to 6,000. So we've seen Westby vary his raise size between 6 and 7,000. And might be getting a walk, although Chris has a hand he can defend with, 10 9 suited. 10 9 offsuit, but not this time. Giving Westby some respect, perhaps not wanting to play against Westby out of position either. As we already mentioned, we do know Westby as a very strong player in international events. At least I am a fan of his play, not somebody I would like to see at the table unless I had position on him. Now Westby with something even better with a suited big slick. He just got a walk with the, not a walk, but a raise, and everybody folded with the ace queen. Now with an even stronger hand, maybe it's not going to start to look he's like he's trying to push around the table. But we see how big his hand is here. But 
nobody waking up with anything, at least thus far. Let's see if Paulson decides to defend his big blind. And it looks like he will with his 10-8 uh, off. This is certainly defendable, even against an under-the-gun open. Easy to get away from, too, if you're facing a lot of action. But he flops that open ender, and it's not going to likely be going anywhere, along with bottom pair, and is a head in the hand. Westby still has two live overcards, has the backdoor flush draw. Both players check to see the two of clubs turn. Let's see if Thompson recognizes he's ahead. He checks, perhaps not wanting to bloat the pot or not recognizing he's ahead. Westby checks back to see the three nine of hearts river. Tolfson has two pair now. However, it isn't top two. Doesn't have that nine for trips or something better for a full house or quads, but thinks he's ahead for 6,000. Must be trying to get a read whether this board helped his opponent. Does feel he's priced in for a call. We'll get the bad news that Tolfson did flop that bottom pair. And improved the two pair on the river. However, that hand did not cost him much. He did open for 7,000, went check, 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 check. And then he called a bet of 6,000 on the river. So just lost 13,000 during that pot. And here's a look at the chip count updates. As we mentioned earlier, Spine Mathiason was red hot to start the day. Chris Jonasson missed the start of the day. He missed about the first 10 hands, but since then has won a few pots. There's a big gap between these two players and the rest of the players at the table. However, everybody has a playable stack with lines at 1,500. But his stack is going to get shorter three next hand, but wine's going up to 1,500, 3,000, as we just heard the floor announce. Not sure if that picked up through the stream, but the wines will be going up after this hand. Cutter Christensen has been a little bit quiet, but now has a hand he can play in an op unopened pot from the cutoff opens with the king-queen off to 6,000. Looks like Henrik Tolfsson wants to play his a6 suited. This is a decent hand to be three betting actually against a cutoff open. So all three possibilities are in play. He could be three betting, he could be platting. I wouldn't even blame him if he wanted to fold considering if he doesn't three bet, he'd be out of position. But we do see a three bet to 19,000. This will get Westby out of the way. Let's see what Christensen decides to do. I wouldn't surprise to see a fold or a call. The only thing that would surprise me is a four bet. If he does call, he'll be in position. And Petter has been very quiet, actually. So his raise should actually look a little bit stronger than it is but Henrik Tolfsson recognizing that this is a spot where potentially he can make a steal and still have a good enough hand on boards if he's called. So well played there by Tolfsson to take down the pot and get his stack over to 200,000 after Petter Christensen folded. The graphics are updated as well. So blinds are at 1,500, 3,000 with the big blind Dan fee of 3,000, as we just mentioned. Blinds do go up quite slowly in this event every hour. And Espen Cole said, let's see if he continues with his limping strategy yeah. or not. Indeed he does, so he's even limping his big slick. So it seems like Espen Kolstad likes to limp whether he's strong 
or weak from any position. It could make it tricky to play against if you're not used to playing against players that limp, especially players that know why they're limping. And Christensen, for example, raising at the 8,000, but you can see that his king-queen is actually dominated by his opponent's ace-king. And meanwhile, Linka winking up with a premium hand from the big line with ace-queen. Does call. And is Polstad going to do a limp raise? Nope, just a limp call as well. I would have liked to have seen a raise there by Espen. But he has a different strategy, which is fine. Every player approaches poker a little bit differently. In this case, Espen Colstad is approaching it a lot differently than me. But he's the one with chips, and I'm the one in the booth. Nobody hitting a piece of this 2, 10, 8 flop with two spades. Nobody even with one spade in their hand. Does check around. We could see some fireworks if an ace or a king hit the board. Very nice awareness here by Linka. The nine of clubs didn't make a difference in her hand, but after it checked around, this kind of board does hit a big blinds range more than under the gun and hijack. But Kolstad, out of nowhere, now showing the aggression, raising it up to 25,000. And this should work. Well played there by Espen Kolstad. I can't say I fully understand the limping strategy that he has at this stage of the tournament, but I can't understand the limping strategy of very strong players such as Dominic Nietzsche either. And all that I have to say about Olympic strategy is if you're going to be do it, understand why you're doing it. Don't just do it because you see other players are doing it. Otherwise, you could get yourself into dangerous spots. But it worked out quite well there for Espen Kolstad. Not as much earlier with his 10s against Ace-10. But that was a bit of a cooler hand for him. with the fives. It's interesting how differently players are approaching the game here on day two of the Norwegian Championship. Jonasson calling from the hijack with the queen four offsuit. That's something that you shouldn't do at home. But he will be in position, can rep a lot more, and happens to be just against five. So this could work out for him in this spot. And Granum, despite only having fives, this is a flop that does hit his early position raise, the king, king, jack, and does continue with the small bet. But Jonasson is very sticky with this queen four, does call. And the jack of hearts double pairing the board on the turn. Now the fives are counterfeited. Jonasson actually ahead. But I'm not sure how he will know he's ahead. I like this bet by Alan Granham. The only way for him to win this pot is by taking it away. But Jonasson going through his head. If he thinks his opponent has like a lot of pocket pairs, 10 or below, his queen kicker is actually good. But if he puts his opponent on like an ace king, he's drawing dead or any ace, and he's drawing very thin. But Jonasson keeping it up with the queen four. Gotta love the heart here. Gotta love the heart.
Is Granum gonna slow down on the seven of spades river? Jonathan didn't appear to be going anywhere thus far, but will not be slowing down. Really wants to take this pot. Bet 16,000. And since I don't play hands like Queen Four, I can't really tell you what's going through Jonathan's mind. But he thinks his queen kicker is good. No. He's turning his hand into a bluff, which makes a lot of sense, and it's going to work in this spot. Jonasson had a plan all along. Love the heart by the Norwegian player. Not a play that I recommend you do at home, but he has. He was a man with a plan, got the job done. A lot of respect there. <laughs> Det er jo veldig mange flere bord som spilles i denne turneringen, og vi har hatt totalt 904 deltakere i Main Event, men en av dem, det er Tale Åberge Nesse, og Tale, du startet på dag to da. Ja, jeg har jo begynt akkurat egentlig, og det var jo egentlig en gledelig overraskelse at man kunne gjøre det. I og med at jeg kom i går, så var jeg jo litt sånn bekymret for om jeg måtte late raya i går kveld, men da slapp jeg det. Du kommer jo fra at du ganske nylig har en andre plass i Ladies Event i NM, men hvordan føler du at det går så langt i dag? Du, jeg har fått et tøft bord da. Jeg har jo en med monster stack her, som også er dritgod å spille poker, men så er han så hyggelig i tillegg, så jeg kan liksom ikke være irritert på han heller. Og så er jeg noen andre som ikke helt har fått tak på enda, men jeg tenker at det må snu. Ja, for hvis jeg skal vise dere litt av bordet her, så kan vi jo starte med denne mannen som står ved min side her. Det er en tidligere endemester i Spæren som ser ut som å trives på dette bordet. Ja, jeg koser meg, ja. Klart for å spille litt. Det er godt, og hvis vi beveger oss på motsatt side av bordet, så er det en mann i pott, men det er egentlig ikke så vanskelig å gjette på, fordi han er alltid i pott. Kajan Mokkeri, det er derfor jeg ikke har dårlig samvittighet for å snakke til deg mens du byr. Nei, det stemmer da. Han går i hvert fall ut med sitt 13 000 bud. Men hvis vi ser her nede på min høyre side akkurat nå, så ser vi at der sitter mannen vi fikk veldig mye på TV-bordet i går. Der sitter nemlig Magnus Karlsen. Han er tilbake på startstack etter at han fullførte i ganske short i går. Han sitter nå på cirka 100 000 etter at han først doblet med konge Knekk da han var shortstack. Og så har han doblet på nytt med S. Konge litt senere. Og det betyr at vi kommer tilbake. Vi holder dere oppdatert på hvordan det ligger han her nede. Got the job done. 
on a double paired board. to just see a flop apparently with an ace seven and not raising it up. Does flop middle pair, random didn't really flop anything and checks. Let's see if Christensen fires out a small bet. A min bet, that should work. Immediately collects the pot. And is back above a starting stack. He was also above a starting stack to start the hand. But if he lost that hand, he would have been below a starting stack, considering just the blinds and Andrew were enough to put him below. And now sitting on about 35 big blinds. Espen Kolstad, this time with Jack-9 from the hijack. It is a suited Jack-9. If I see Kolstad during some of the breaks, I will ask him about his jumping strategy, whether it's something he studied or whether he just likes to play small pots in the beginning or what the reasoning behind the jumping is. Just because I don't understand it doesn't mean it's not okay. And Jonathan, the wild card, raising it up to 12,000 from the big blind with 10 9 off. Timing might not be so good there. Especially with a jack out of the window. Although the ace of hearts is a scare card. Nobody with hearts in their hand with two hearts in the air. this one away. I don't think Polstad uh, is going too far though, although he was facing a raised preflop, so there are a lot of aces that his opponent could have. <laughs> and does give up on the hand, he gives Jonathan credit. So players are having a very difficult time adjusting to Jonathan. Fine, Matthewson raises it up to 12,000 from the hijack. That's everyone else to fold besides Polstad. And Polstad will call to bring 31,500 into the pot. Nobody getting much club. Well, no, Colstead approving the top pair and has a backdoor flush draw on the six of hearts, queen of spades, king of hearts flop. And we'll be dunk betting this flop for 20,000. Unable to get value out of his top pair, at least in this circumstance, but does chip back up to 88,000.
Vi har en tradition i NM, det er at de som presterer best i World Series of Poker, de følger opp med de desidert beste resultatene i NM også. Absolutt ikke noe press her, Espen Ullen Gjørstad. Du... Absolutt ikke. Absolutt ikke noe press, nei. Hvordan går det så langt? Um, jeg er ganske kjedelig i dag igjen. Jeg fikk ikke bygd noe spesielt. Jeg tror jeg kanskje er tilbake på startstack. Jeg startet dagen med sånn 80 000. Kanskje tilbake på sånn 100 nå. Men jeg ser at Mario, han er på plass og passer på her. Ja, vi må nesten... Jeg fikk et spørsmål nylig, faktisk. Hva prisen ville ha vært hvis jeg skulle ha solgt den? Så tenkte jeg først nær. Jeg kan jo selge den for hva som helst. Det er jo bare en liten plastikkfigur. Men, uh... men så begynte jeg å tenke sånn her... Jeg kan nesten ikke selge den, jo. For at... Ja, den har på en måte blitt litt sånn her trademark. Så jeg tipper den... Uh... Hvis det er noen som har lyst til å betale meg sånn 100 000 dollar, så kanskje... Kanskje jeg skal få den, men... Ellers så må jeg nok ha den med meg, ja. Going rate, hvis dere var i tvil, 100 000 dollar, hvis dere har lyst til å varte opp det for en Plast Mario med en ganske så spesiell Vesopp-historie, der er det bare å si for deg. Jeg tror Espen er villig til å snakke i hvert fall. Technicians who are right here. Hopefully, we get this fixed as soon as possible. 